Hey, Mitch. Oh, hey, Ed. How are you? What's up with the getup? What What do you mean? I, I want to look like... Oh, Ed. Ed, come on. Watch your mouth. No, no, no. I'm so, I, I, we're going to be talking about all things today. It's going to be oh, exciting. No, Ed, 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 stop. Is. Stop. What? You don't know... You no, know, no, 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 seriously. I've, 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 I've even got some pics. Do you want to have a look? No, no, Ed. No, I don't. I don't know what's going on in no, Australia. Have a look. It's no. great. See, look. No, no, I don't want to see it at all. No, no have a no. look, Mitch. Mitch, it's fine. Oh, Ed, that's Warren Beatty. Yeah, because we're talking about Dick Tracy. Dick Tracy. Oh, I thought you were talking about. What? Uh, let's just start the show. <laughs> Hi, this is Ed Dollister. And this is Mitch Halleck. And welcome to another exciting episode of Mitch and Ed's Excellent Adventure. If it's your first time here, thanks so much for stopping by. If you are a regular viewer, thanks for coming back. But Mitch, before we start on today's crime topic, could you uh, maybe let the listeners know what they should do if they want to find out a little bit more about our show? Well, Ed, if you really want to get the lowdown on what we're talking about, you don't need to hire a gumshoe. If you're smart, you'll do what's right for you, and you'll hit the subscribe button right down there. And if you really think you know it all, you'll also hit the notification so you'll get a little bird on your shoulder every time Ed and I go out for an excellent adventure, like today, when we're going to go dig up some dirt on Dick. Tracy. Tracy. Dick Tracy. That's right. We are talking about Dick Tracy, in particular, the 1990 movie starring and uh, directed by Warren Beatty. And uh, I actually really like this film, but it seems to have been somewhat forgotten. I mm. feel it. Uh, you don't say it's not on Disney. Plus. It's a Disney film or a touchstone film, but it was uh, it's not on Disney Plus. They released a Blu-ray version of it. Just a bare bones one. Yeah. Um, it's uh, not really, I had to rent it uh, on Apple TV so I could watch it again. I don't know why it's sort of uh, forgotten, but we're going to be talking a little bit about it. Uh, before we start, I suppose, about the actual movie, Dick Tracy has been around since um, 1931. 1931. Oh, you got it. You got in. 1931, created by? Chester Gould. That's right. And uh, he was originally called Plain Clothes Tracy. I knew that. Yeah, I thought you did. I was going to keep and, throwing these out. That's okay. It's and the uh, the, newspaper. Yep, that's right. And the uh, editor decided, well, let's call it, let's call him Dick Tracy. That's a little bit easy, easier. And uh, pretty much since 1931, the strip has been in syndication, certainly up to Chester Gould's uh, death in 1977. Yeah, I mean, yeah. uh, then I think it was Max Collins. Max Allen Collins. Yeah, who took, who actually wrote the novelization as well, um, which was. And the Road to Perdition. Ah, there you go. He was uh, he was really um, entrenched in that sort of noir yes. and Dick yeah. Tracy lore. Um, and it's still been going, but obviously he's sort of somewhat forgotten. Mm. Uh, but not forgotten to, um, I suppose, movie producers and people who are interested in bringing uh, Dick Tracy to the big screen. There were a number of uh, films and serials in the 30s and 40s. He was, Dick Tracy was huge in that time. Yeah. There was, yeah. memorabilia there was merchandising he advertising he was everywhere and i suppose after superman the movie came out you know that sort of re reignited people's love for um you know big budget superhero movies uh you know on the big screen that's when they thought about uh bringing dick tracy uh to the silver screen and they in actually had uh, Tom Mankiewicz who was involved in Superman the movie was looking to write it they had all these different directors um, involved they um, offered it to uh, Steven Spielberg at one point he was involved Richard Benjamin was going to direct it who's not exactly I wouldn't call him an A-list director really my favorite year that was a good one well okay that was probably his best one but I just think of him from Quark you know he wasn't really great in Quark. Remember Quark? Oh, we've talked about Quark. Yes. I know. Yeah. Luckily, he passed um, on that, I think. Oh, I was going to say, he's, he's still alive. He is. In fact, yeah, well, he passed. Here he's he right is. here. Ladies and gentlemen, Richard Benjamin with the worst toupee in Hollywood. Really? That's not true. That's me. Oh, yeah, it's all fake. What? Oh, 
Yes. I'm going to have to Google that. Anyway, so um, it basically it fell to uh, Warren Beatty, Bonnie and Clyde, I suppose. His, People uh, Harry Fisher. Yes, his, his oh hair like, so, that was yeah. um shampoo, shampoo that he did that was the, that was the first film I ever saw in the cinema. My parents took me to see Shampoo in and the rest when I was history. when I was about four. I think it came out in like 1974 because they thought it was going to be a yeah. fun comedy 75. set in the hairdressers. Yeah, it was a sex romp. Yeah, I know. Anyway, I turned out okay. It's all fine. Jill Clayburn. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, and also uh, in nineteen seventy eight, Well, he was also known for Bonnie and Clyde. I of course. Feelings, but that's a big deal here. Oh, big my big gosh, big yes. Big. And uh, Heaven Can Wait was fantastic. Yeah, Reds. Heaven Can Wait was there. Ishtar, Ishtar. Which isn't as bad as everyone says it is, but no, no. just costs a lot of money. Anyway, so he came on board to, uh, to write and uh, direct. Mm -hmm. And um, I've got to say, watching, uh, watching it back again just a few nights ago it's a it's a it's a good fun movie with i suppose the main thing for me is the striking visual style so basically warren Beatty on only used six colors and black and white so all the colors are really um rock solid they're sort of not colors that you would see in everyday life but you would see them in a comic book strip and the characters as well are straight out of the comic books. Tess Trueheart, the kid. Um, you had Mumbles, Big Boy Caprice, um, Flat Top. Yeah, all those. All the the makeup, which it won an Academy yep. Award for, um, is fantastic. So it really is an instance of a comic book coming to life. Did you see it in the movies? Not only that, Ed, I was well familiar with Dick Tracy because. My dad grew up reading Dick Tracy in the funny papers. Mm -hmm. And then Dick Tracy, like you mentioned earlier, was on many serials. I think he had like, oh, like maybe a dozen movie serials, like the chapter serials that you see yep. in the movie theater. And then he was on the radio. It was a big deal that he was on the radio. Then he was on cartoon shows here in the States that I used to see reruns of as a kid. He was on the Archie's. You know, like I remember saying that as well. Yeah. Yes. And then they had these flying garbage can things. Him and Sam Ketchum would go after and Tess Trueheart was on it. And then they had that moon girl that was there. Well, oh, the moon maiden moon maiden. What happened is they Chester Gould used to get bashed all the time by the public because Dick Trace was very, very violent. I mean, it was done during the 30s and the racketeer and the the bootleg wars and Al Capone. In fact, he got inspired by Elliot Ness, who ends up taking down Al Capone in real life. That's the whole impetus behind Dick Tracy. So there was always gunplay and there was shooting up and things like that. And he was like, hey, what do you want? But the kids loved it. And the adults did too. Everybody wanted Dick Tracy. And it just got more and more violent. And then they said, eh, we got to bring it back a little bit. And then they even got him into the space race in the 60s because he had a yep. change with the times and he went up there to be on moon patrol. Eh, and I don't know, he even got in trouble because he said something about the violence. He's like, violence is the way to accomplish things. Yes. And they yes. printed that the day after Robert Kennedy got shot in the head uh, when he was running for president. And they now, that like, wasn't really chester gould's <laughs> fault it was the timing no it was just bad timing it was like because he wrote that obviously weeks earlier of course. he wasn't advocating let's take violence and change the world it just so well, happened yeah it fell yeah. on the wrong day it's kind and of he like, even he, uh even in the 70s he got a sort of a hippie sort of a sidekick oh yeah he grew him he grew a mustache a mustache he had some longer hair yeah smoking some weed i think now and then oh wait that might have been some of the other dick tracy they don't talk about but no yeah, they, they, he, he did change with the times. He was still a violent guy and all that stuff. But if it wasn't for Dick Tracy, would we have the Apple Watch? I don't know, because he thought of it first with his two-way wrist radio. And then the guy that made the mobile phone said he was inspired by Dick Tracy's wrist radio watch. Yep. Look at that. See, I've so there's a lot of stuff that came from Dick Tracy. Yep. So uh, and you know Batman, no. though it, it's been it's been said that uh, Bob Kane um, was inspired somewhat by uh, Dick Tracy oh, yeah. to create absolutely um, to create Batman as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, you know it's funny. William Dozier, who made the Batman TV show in the '60s, actually made 
a pilot about Dick Tracy in the 60s. It never took off and never became an ongoing series, but they did try to make a Dick Tracy. They didn't do the whole limited palette like uh, yes. Warren Bain did years later. They tried to make it more realistic uh, crime drama type of thing. But like I said, when I was a kid, every Sunday, we'd get the Sunday funnies and Dick Tracy was always in the paper. It was always like the first thing you saw. And they would have these things called Dick Tracy's Crime Stoppers. Mm -hmm. And there was these little tiny panels that would say, don't let your newspapers pile up outside if you're not home. That tells crooks that your house is ready to be robbed. And it would always be like, don't talk to strangers and don't put your finger in electrical sock and don't pee on an electric fence. Things like that would be coming from, well, I don't think Dick Tracy talked about urine a lot, but he did have the Dick Tracy Crime Stoppers. And as a kid, I used to cut them out and they would have little holes that you could punch and put a ring around it and ah. you make a little booklet. And I was such the nerd I was actually collecting Dick Tracy Crime Stopper uh, panels so I could grow up and stop crime in my neighborhood and be a dick, Tracy. And then everything went crazy when the Batman 89 movie came out. Disney said, don't we have something like this out there? And they did, and they dusted it off, and they gave the green light, and Warren Beatty said, let's go make the movie, and boom. They That's it. The, they even got Danny Elfman to do the music. I know. So, so well, much let's, let's, trying to make it there. Uh, look, a lot of people do think that, oh, this was Disney's response to uh, Batman and the success of Batman. It had been in development for, you know, a few years yeah. prior to that. But what they did take from Batman was they wanted to, um, they did. The uh, marketing. Did, Warren, Warren Beatty did, um, was really impressed with um, Danny Elfman's score. And um, yeah. I've got it here on audio cassette, Look at um, that. which were which it, it's actually a fantastic score, um, mm. Danny Elfman score. It is it is sort of Batman esque, but I think it's uh, it really fits the character. It's really good. Um, they well, took one the of the other things. Yep, I was gonna yep. say one of the other things they did is the Batman marketing. Yes, campaign was so successful with the silhouette of the bat and the logo, and everybody had it that they tried to do that with Dick Tracy by like you can see on the cover of the book there. They did the profile. Yes. And this, you know, the, the, the thing of it is in the comics, Dick Tracy had a very unique profile. He had this like hawk he beak did. nose and everybody knew that. And when they made that poster, the first thing I looked at, I was like, well, that's a little tiny Warren Beatty pushed up nose. That's not Dick Tracy. Yeah, they were going hawk to. Nose, they did you know? experiment with giving uh, Warren it Beatty the, uh, makeup, but yeah. it just didn't look right. They thought, well, let's, goofy. Have, let's have, you know, you know, Warren Beatty shine through. Um. Yeah, so you can see that that's actually I've got a um over there is um a Dick Tracy cushion. The things that you collect over the years, I didn't think yeah. I had a much bigger of a, a Dick Tracy collection, but I had a bigger collection than I expected. So um yeah, so they followed the marketing. Uh, they mm. had uh, the character posters using the uh, the comic yep. book um um art um which was well, great. I had a few I had a few of those posters um at next to my Highlander two poster probably. Well, no, I was gonna say they had prince do the soundtrack for the batman movie he did some songs original songs for that but they had to get the biggest pop star they could at the time that was madonna yes so not only was she in the movie but they she contributed some songs to it so they were really trying to mirror the success with oh the, yeah they had um they had background. stephen sondheim uh famous yeah. uh, composer write uh, a number of songs she had her own soundtrack called i'm breathless then there was the danny elfman uh soundtrack yep. as well um she um she was really good playing breathless mahoney um breathless mahoney, there was yeah. glenn headley um playing uh tess trueheart you had um, glenn headley who sadly no longer with us but guess where she's from i know connecticut i did look it up i know I, she's from connecticut she passed away a couple of years ago at 62 very young yeah but uh real quick i remember the night that movie premiered it was just as big a deal as batman and in fact, weeks earlier to go to the movie, you would have to buy a Dick Tracy movie premiere T-shirt. And I have one. I just couldn't find it in time for the show. Basically, it's that shot of the poster in the silhouette with him holding a Tommy gun. And it's the top of it said Dick Tracy, but the bottom of it had a ticket stub graphic mm -hmm. and there was a number on it. And each theater had like about 200 seats or 300 and every shirt was numbered and you had to wear the shirt or bring it with you to the night of the premiere. And that's how they knew that you had yep. a ticket for the show. So it was a collector's item 
wearable collector's item, but that was a unique uh, way to do something for a premiere. So mm. that was that was and, one um, of the first Dick Tracy merchandise I saw. Plus the PVC figures. I remember they came out with they came out with action figures that were not the best because I don't playmates know. Playmates brought, brought playmates brought the action yeah, they, figures. They were real bulky looking, and there was a big uh, to do about Sam the Tramp or something like that. Or yes, with uh, the blank. Uh, they had a yeah. um, a uh, action figure of the blank, but they which you could pull off the head and underneath spoiler, it was actually Breathless oh, Mahoney under there. So they um, apparently pulled those. They only released them in Canada. And yeah. uh, as a result, um, you know, they're quite rare as well. And <laughs> I should say, I know you were saying about the not, <laughs> we're jumping all over the shop. Yeah, yeah, that's I, fine. Usual, but with the novel, so there were yes. two versions of this novel. So I've got the novel version that came out prior to the movie, which doesn't yes. reveal that Breathless Mahoney is the blank. It just says. Really? Um, yep. It just says. I have that, that um, same book. And I... Tracy stayed with a troubled, misguided soul who had been the blank. Criminal or not, the blank had spared Tracy's life more than once, waiting for the ambulance, but death came first. So See? you never knew it was uh, Breathless Mahoney. Until in this you saw version. the movie. Yeah. So uh, and, that's how they combated that. No, but I was going to say one of the other things about Dick Tracy is it comes out in 1990, a year after the Batman movie. Yes. But it was weird reception because I saw it. I, I really liked the design, the art, you know, the whole set design, the color scheme. I thought yes. that was really well done. The music was well done. It also had the first time reunion of Al Pacino yes, and Sonny Corleone. The, the late James Conner just passed yes. away last week as we record this. So that was kind of cool to see them all together. I do believe they asked Robert Duvall to be in it, but he declined. And I know they asked Gene Hackman to play a part, but he didn't. Gene Hackman know, didn't want to work with Warren Beatty, I believe. So. Oh, is that what it was? Yes. Oh, because I remember hearing something about Gene Hackman was, you know, they were trying to get him to do the movie. But they had an but, uh, uh, amazing uh, cast. Um, yeah. You know, and you're having a look. It's great to have a look through the uh, credits. So you're going, hang on, that's Kathy Bates. You know, this is yeah, Kathy made, Bates, is it? you know, and Charlie um, Orsmo. The year after that would be in Hook uh, with Steve. He was in, yeah, I was going to say he was the kid actor at the time. He was Dustin everything. Hoffman as Mumbles. Dustin Hoffman's in it. Yeah. Yep. Um, then, there is. Um, I, the fellow that ends up playing Al Capone on the Untouchables TV show. I've met him several times. Who was flat top. He was flat top. He was flat he? top. William Forsythe. Yes. Is the actor's name. Yeah. And I was going to say, I remember picking up the little PVC action figure. Not action. They're just like little yeah, hard figures. From I remember buying the, yeah. And I bought flat top. Yeah. And I remember the woman asking me, she's like, why are you buying the anti the villains? I go, what's it to you, Dame? And this just ring me on up and stop it. So whatever. Yeah. I had, um, I had some of the applause uh, figures. They, and uh, I had a, uh, an applause sort of like a rag doll version of Dick Tracy, which um, I had uh, had sold on. The pillows, um, they had- well, lots I remember of... they had the action figures. There was a, they were all that bright yellow packaging. And there was a car, I believe. I think they came out with like a, a Dick Tracy automobile. You know what we, we really got to do sooner or later is we got to complete our 30s style movies that came out because you got to think it starts with- no, it starts with Dick Tracy. Yeah. And then it goes to the Rocketeer, which is another Disney related which we've product. Done. You can year. look at it here. Yep. We already did that one. Then the following year, you've got The Shadow with Alec Baldwin. I think yep. that's 92. And then is it 94? We've got The Phantom. So you almost have these classic 30s depression era yes. heroes, but they didn't really spark a huge craze. Not like Indiana audience. Jones. They were sort of trying to get, um, I think they were trying hoping that Dick Tracy would be. Uh, Sort of an Indiana Jones style blockbuster. We've got the good old uh, lapel yep. pin. Pin. We've got there. We've got the um. They had badges. Trading cards. I remember getting trading yes. cards. Of course. Um. They did do a board game. They also did a of lunchbox and they a thermos, to. but they were plastic. Um, Was there a video um, game though? There were lots of video games actually. They came out really? uh, with um one for the Sega Mega Drive, the Game Boy, the NES. Uh, they came out, unfortunately, after, I think, even after the VHS release of it. And uh, so it didn't do. 
Ooh, they were that late. They were that yeah. behind on everything. Yeah, huh. it didn't really do. Um, this is a great book that I picked up, the uh, making of the movie. This is, you know, remember in the good old days when uh, you used to get before um, DVD extras and making yeah. ofs and YouTube. Yeah, you had um, to but, read and see some but, production studios. So, yeah, yeah, but this one is actually um really quite good. The other thing yeah. with the um with the movie Dick Tracy, you had uh, Michael Lloyd and Harrison Ellenshaw who did the visual effects. Oh, the, the, most the, 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 people the paintings. watching yeah. this who know Harrison Ellenshaw would uh, know him from matte paintings. And yes. the visual effects in this, they look, they they look like visual effects. They look, but they look beautiful. It's supposed you know? to look like a comic book. It's supposed yeah, to have absolutely. That you know, and they use lots of model. This is sort of the last film, really, to use traditional uh, visual effects. There wasn't any yeah, digital uh, recreation. Yeah. It was all optical printing and everything. You know, it's like weird. That. I remember going to Disney World in 1992 or Universal. No, it was 92. I was out in Los Angeles. Yep. And yep. they had the sets that they were using in the backlot tour. I believe yes. it was in Universal or maybe it was Disney. It was probably Disney now I think about it since it was a Disney production. But they had the street sets yep. from yep. Dick Tracy and they had them in uh, primary colors. Like you'd walk down the street yes. and there'd be like a red building, a yellow building, a bluish building. And they had a lot of the cars and the cabs that they still use. And I remember going through there used to be like the great movie tour backlot ride and it would take you on like a tram and they'd show you like the special effects and i remember they had the 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 the, the prosthetics that the guy wore for flat top and a lot of the the dick tracy outfit you know the brow and all the, the mumbles face and, and all that sort of stuff yeah. yeah they were just all laid out on the table with like you know as if that was just being done but there was a lot a lot of practical effects and makeup effects like you said for Dick Tracy, they did go out of their way. Oh yeah, look at again. It won. It was nominated for um, a number of Oscars. Art direction, it didn't win. Um, uh, Al Pacino was nominated best supporting yeah. actor. He didn't win, um, but it won for a best song, um, mm. best makeup, and best. I uh, know it won. It did win for best art direction as well. Oh, it did. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, which I think it it was you know well deserved. I mean, he had such a you know a talented cast behind a lot of that makeup of so many familiar faces bug bailey that you're going hang on i know him from here and oh there's there's um richard fleischer you know um who oh, friend roger rabbit was in no, it we were just talking about it yeah um yeah. which is interesting because uh they opened the film with um a oh, roger rabbit runaway show. rabbit yeah it was a roller coaster rabbit yeah so they yeah, had that at the that. start. Yeah. Cole Meany. Do you remember Cole Meany? From, oh, my God. Uh, he's uh, Miles uh, O'Brien from Deep yeah. Space Nine. He's, yeah. He appears as a policeman in it. There's a lot yep. of little. Oh, Dick Van Dyke as the. Uh, as the, Oh, as, as the a mayor or the judge. Yeah. The judge, yeah, um, yeah. Who, during his death scene, as he gets. I was I was thinking, like, he was. He must have been in his. Maybe. Well, 60. he's 98 now. So yeah, this so is 30s, back late then. 60s. Yeah. Um, he, uh, he gets shot um, and does this fall onto the bed and on the floor yeah. he broke his shoulder doing that and that's the no he did not he did well he gave us all for his art he did he was that. he was great it's, like so it's got a, yeah so it's got a wonderful cast um again you said the score is pretty amazing it it cost 46 million it went over budget but it cost 46 million to uh, make it was a success it made 163 million dollars worldwide so it was quite a successful film but it just didn't uh, no, you know, it, it was no Batman. It was no Batman. I, it sort of reminds me a bit, not that it was the same, but you know, like Avatar sort of was yeah. a success. It was a huge success, but I don't know if it's uh, that. Uh, Beloved. Yeah. You know, I don't Let know me what just it tell is. You. Let me tell you real quick about Avatar. Avatar 2 is coming out this year. I saw the trailer for it. Yep. Avatar is like the mind wipe of people. When you tell people what's the number one movie, I was on the radio. We didn't know. We were doing like, what's the biggest movie of all time? And they're like, oh, it's Titanic. No, wait, it's the Avengers. No, wait a minute. It's Endgame. No, wait a minute. It's uh, Infinity. War. And we're going back and forth, back and forth. And none of us were right until somebody looked it up and said, no, it's Avatar. And then everybody in the room went, oh, yeah, Avatar. We had all seen it. But no one really like fondly remembered it. It was like, oh, yeah, I, I saw Avatar. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. And it was that. It was like 
all right. And now they're coming out with sequels and Disney's made that huge land down in Disney which World. Is, and they've which is the fantastic. It's amazing. You know? But there's just something about it. I don't know. It's technically brilliant. But there's no spark to it. I mean, it's not Star Wars. I'd watch a hokey Star Wars, you know, any day over yeah. the I, I, Avatar is just not it. And the same thing with Dick Tracy. I saw it in the theaters. I never owned it on DVD. I never owned it on VHS. I kind of like was into it for about two weeks. And then I kind of just forgot about it. And, you know, yeah. maybe that's yeah. why they've never brought Dick Tracy back because they did try a couple mm-hmm. years ago. But of all things, Warren Beatty sued because he owns all the rights to Dick Tracy to make any sequels, any TV shows, anything you want to do in the you know film or TV media, you got to go through Warren Beatty because he owns the rights to it and he ain't letting those go because he says, I'm going to make a sequel to that someday. Yeah. Now he's knocking on the door of like 80 something years old or he's in his 80s as it is. Well, if Harrison Ford can do it, happy birthday today, by the way, Harrison. I know you watch. I don't think that he's doing another Dick Tracy. No. Um, sure. But he said he had a good idea for a sequel and, uh, the, the closest we got, I guess, was uh, mm. they did a special with, um, um, oh my gosh, who's the Leonard, who's the uh, um, the Eat Entertainment? Leonard Moulton? Leonard Moulton. So they did a special where Leonard Moulton interviewed Dick Tracy. So they had Warren Beatty as Dick Tracy and they were doing an interview to publicize the whole thing. That's as close as we'll probably get to seeing any more um, you know, Warren Beatty led Dick Tracy. And it is a shame because I think it would have been good or, you know what it would be? It would make a great Disney Plus TV series. I think that would be kind of cool. So well, now that he's got the gunplay, they probably don't want it. I mean, there's whole sequences where there's this machine gun going on everywhere. And we talked about Flat Top and they do a montage where he's like laughing as he's firing this, you know. But it's, yeah. all, you know, that's where I know. Oh, and there, there is a little bit all of done and fun. Those yeah, well, bullets are rubber. It's a little, uh, it is, it wasn't released by Disney. It was released through Touchstone Pictures. Touchstone, because which was, was their a little adult, bit. That was their adult label. You know, was the um, there was quite flash. a few suggestive, uh, you know, lines in there from Breathless. And uh, she did wear some re- revealing. Revealing clothing. Yeah. You know, uh, Florence. Madonna, Pugh, like, for God's sakes. You didn't hire Mother Teresa to play it. I know. Come on. Well, that, that would have been, been just movie. strange. Yeah, I know. I was just thinking about that. I see, right? I had a mental image then. Thank you. But it's, look, Dick Tracy, it's certainly worth watching. Um, rent it if you can. It's cheap to pick up on Blu-ray. It's a it's a good, uh, fun two really hours. Weird because like comic books, I think. We so. went through the 32nd anniversary. I mean, 30-year anniversary came and went. Nobody, nobody did dick yep. about it. You, you would have thought, you, you know how they make money on everything. They redid it for The Rocketeer. They came out with a, yep. a special Blu-ray. And that movie did a lot less money than Dick Tracy. Yep. You know? So, But I'll tell you, one of the artists that continued the Dick Tracy strip, Joe Staten, is coming to Terrificon. He uh, he still does. The, they still have Dick Tracy out there. The, the, the strip is still yeah. out there, and they still do it. But Yep. And you, know. you can certainly he's, buy. He's they paid. did... Um, yeah. I know that his daughter, Chester Gould's daughter, um, a year or two before he passed away, you know, did uh, sit down interviews with him and everything like that. And they've collated all those. They've also collated all the strips from his tenure at it. And you can get all those. Oh, yeah. From, you can get um, nice bound books with all the Dick Tracy yeah. stuff. In it. So um, if you, you know, if you like, like, if you haven't seen it, I'd certainly recommend watching it. I think every... Um, Every movie, comic book movie fan should at least watch it once. And I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. You know, it's of its time. You know, it's a bit slower paced, but visually it's pretty dynamic. Music is great. The characters are all pretty true to the um, to their comic book counterparts. And uh, it's a bit of fun. So you could do a lot worse, I think. You know what? You could also do a lot worse. Not by- subscribe to our show. Exactly. How can you do that, Mitch? Oh, and it's as easy as loading a gun and going on a murdering spree up and down the streets. And oh, I'm sorry. It's as easy as talking to Tess Trueheart, trying to find out what's going on in the streets. All you got to do is hit the subscribe button on the bottom. And then if you really want to know, hit the notification button over there. And if you really like it, hit the like button. And we'll really appreciate that. And that's all you got. That was that's my sound. speed voice. I could do mumbles too doing it. Oh, God, can you do that? 
That was the best part of the movie, by the way. Yep. When uh, they're going to make him talk and they slow down the, uh, the, the yes. tape recording wire. And also he's like, big boy did it. Big boy did it. Big boy yep. did it. Did you always did you uh, think that the water um urn, you know where they oh. were they had the recorder that the uh yeah. that where the water came out was a bit in a funny position? I always thought that was. It was. Anyway. It was, but you know, we don't want to talk about it. But I'll tell you what, I really like this picture. It was yeah. fun. It was a yeah, fun, fun time. And back yeah. That's all you can hope for sometimes. And uh, who's Mandy. the piano player? Mandy Patamkin. Mandy Patinkin, yeah, 88 keys. Mandy. With, keys, the, with the worst comb over in movie history, I think. So worse than Gene Wilder and Willy Wonka. That's that's that's. Don't you say anything about that. That's fine. That that that. Anyway, anyway, as, as, as we closed. both wear hats because our toupees are uh, in the wash at the moment. So yeah, yeah. So, I think we're closing the case on this dick. I think we too. are indeed. So that's it for another exciting episode of Mitch and Ed's excellent. Oh my gosh, I couldn't even mumble. I was turning into mumbles. Excellent adventure. Thanks for watching. Um, this is Ed Dollister. And this is Mitch Halleck. And we'll see you next time. Take care.